Hey guys, we've got the brand new Axial 2017 Jeep JK ready to run here. On this truck, we now have a brand new Axial Jeep JK body with a molded in hard top. CRC license front and rear bumper as well as new rock rails. Also, this is the very first time we've ever seen Nitto tires on an Axial. On the last Casey Curry car, we saw the Axial BFG crawler style tire come out on that one, which was a great looking tire. On this one now for the Casey Curry side, we see the Nittos. These are molded in Axials ready to run S30 compound which does all right, but down the road, I'm sure we will see the R35 version of these trail grapplers also made available. Axial has added a bunch of details to this 2017 Jeep JK body. It now has a hard plastic molded radiator that sits behind of this grill. This grill was now cut out to see the depth of that radiator. That radiator also molds in light buckets for the functional headlights and marker lights in this. To go along with those front lights, we also have functioning rear tail lights now with a nice hard plastic molded rear, rear tail light that looks very much like a real Jeep's tail light setup. We do have a new flat fender style fender on this body, a little bit different than the old version on the 2012 Jeep JK that we saw, but these things look great and have a little bit more clearance than we saw on the last version. Out of the box, this Jeep does come with mirrors bolted on, but in the spare parts bag, it also has windshield wipers, door handles, and hood latches that you can add if you'd like. These new CRC side rails also have a nice channel behind them to tuck the body in. Having that channel really helps add a little bit of rigidity to this body. Something else to know is that on this body right now, I have actually modified one of the 2012 Jeep bodies to use the interior and cage from it and I've already put it inside. I painted it all flat black so that it kind of just blended in but adds a little bit of scale realism. I really like how it came out and it was a super simple process. When removing that JK body from the chassis, you do have to remove the two pigtail wires that connect those new front running lights and rear tail lights to the body. Something to note is that those two pigtails actually come out of the ESC, not a separate light controller. So all of that built into one unit, which does make for nice, clean wiring. Now, if you ever replace the ESC, you're also going to have to figure out how to hook up your LEDs again. And I will definitely cover that in a following episode. Underneath the body, we do see that new transmission. Now, this transmission now integrates a molded motor plate into the back half of the transmission. Now, that does have a new spur gear cover to fit that molded rear half. The old style motor plate was a metal motor plate that had a plastic spacer behind it that also acted as the rear of the spur gear cover. This gets rid of a lot of that and it builds in a nice beefy, although plastic motor plate. As I mentioned, inside we do now have centered metal gears. The gears are built of the same material as that stock top input gear has always been. So now all three gears inside are of that same design. A nice upgrade for the ready to run guys for sure. They should keep you going down the road for quite a while. Having to replace a stripped idler gear, which is the center of the three gear set in this transmission, was something that commonly had to be done with this style of truck. And that really should be fixed for the most part in stock form with this new upgraded gear set that these cars come with now. To remove the transmission from this car, it's got the same four screw bolt pattern in the bottom of the skid plate. However, it is worth noting that all four of those screws are now equal length. It's those little things that if you've ever worked on an axial and you've accidentally jammed both too long of a screw into the short pocket or you've stripped out the case by trying to tighten the shorter screw into where the longer screw should have gone. It's just one of those things that having that little detail fixed now makes it even easier to work on this car. On the same note of the simplicity of that hardware, there's four screws that hold the two case halves of the transmission together. Those four screws are also equal length and they're also the same length and design as the skid plate screws. So if you remove the skid plate, you're gonna remove the four bolts from there and remove the four bolts from the two case halves, but all eight of those screws are going to be the same, which is going to make putting everything back together 
super simple. This SCX-102 rated run is coming with the standard Axial 35 turn sealed can brush motor. As we mentioned earlier, the sliders are new on this truck. However, they do bolt to the same trays that connect to the chassis underneath of the body. So nothing new there other than just the actual outer part of the slider that bolts on to that system. Those new front and rear bumpers connect to the same chassis braces that we've seen on both the SCX-102 kit and the other SCX-102 ready to run already. Everything underneath of the body otherwise, basically the same as you saw it on the last SCX-102 ready to run. So there is a quick rundown to the new 2017 Axial JK. To date, this is the best SCX-10 ready to run that has been put out. All metal gears, a great looking body if you're a Jeep fan like me, good looking tires, nice high clearance bumpers, working lights, some nice added details with the uh, front radiator, the new molded Fender flares are great looking. Overall though, I just think this is the best SCX-10 ready to run they've come out with yet. If you're looking for an SCX-10 II ready to run, I don't think there's any other way to look than this guy right now. I'm hoping to take this car out on the rocks this weekend and do some crawling with it. See how these new trail grapplers do on the rocks in this S30 compound and really just go have some fun with it. Once I get back from playing on the rocks though, we're going to jump right into working on this car. My plan for this build is that I'm gonna be going through and just hitting step-by-step -step upgrade videos on every upgrade I can do on this truck. So to be more focused to the guys who are a little bit newer to the hobby and need a little bit more info on how to get these things accomplished. If that's something you're interested, subscribe to the channel and you'll see updates on this car rolling out very soon. If you guys have any specific topics that maybe don't get covered enough on those simple how-to videos that you would like to see, feel free to comment what those are. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you on the next one.